So I just started praying. When I closed my eyes, suddenly I was having a, a vision that was a moving vision. And it was literally, uh, the only, it, was, it was literally exactly like sitting in a movie theater watching on a big screen a movie. And for, I think, probably 40 to 45 minutes, I watched and I narrated what I was seeing. And what I was seeing was this coming revival. And again, though I know it won't be limited to the young, in this vision, that's what the Lord chose to show me. And he zeroed in on campuses. And I saw the Spirit of God begin to move on college campuses and universities and high school campuses. And if I could have written a script or written a story about how great it was and how powerful it was, I would not have written anything as strong and powerful as what I began to see in this vision. Because the Spirit of God began to literally take over campuses and universities. And what I saw mostly, more than anything else, the number one thing that stood out to me throughout this vision was fire. The fire of God, the fires of revival began to spring up across the nation. And I was, I was, as I was narrating this, what I was seeing, I was calling out universities. I see it now on such and such a campus, and I see this, and I see that, and now I see this campus, and this campus, and yeah, if I realized it at some point, and I made clear to them, this is, he's not just showing me the limited campuses where this is going to happen. He's just showing me campuses because this is just coming everywhere. And signs and wonders were breaking out. And by the way, this was not led by any person. It was not organized. And most of the time, these students had no idea what they were doing. But some were raised in church. Someone knew a few songs, whether it was a hymn or a chorus, and there'd be a room of a thousand of them, and they just, they're talking about this thing that God has started doing, and somebody would start to sing, and others would join in and start to sing. Next thing you know, Spirit of God fills the room. People start getting saved, delivered, screaming as demons left them all across the room, delivered from every addiction, everything you can imagine, set free because, and it wasn't because anybody touched them, nobody spoke to them. The presence and glory of God came in the room. And it was so strong that it was just like in the New Testament when Jesus walked in the synagogue and the demons started screaming, please don't torment us. Just let us go. And that started happening and miracles started breaking out. People were saved and this just spread all over the nation. The fires of revival were springing up everywhere. There were... There were places where for days, there were no classes. Events were canceled. Sporting events were canceled. Because the kids, the students didn't want to do anything else. They're captivated by God. It was passionate. It was raw. It did not look like anything you see on Sunday morning. And there were so many of them. And the passion was so great from God and in them. And I was not trying to be funny when I said it. I turned to the leaders just like here off to my right at one point in this vision and I looked at them and I said with deep conviction, this is going to be very hard to steward.
because they didn't want religion. They didn't want our form and our method. They didn't want the structure. They didn't want to look like us. And yet I, I, I know enough to know they're going to need leadership. And they're going to need to be discipled and fathered and mothered. And, uh, and, and, and yet they, th- I knew that this movement would never tolerate anyone trying to shape it into what they thought it should look like. And I thought... We're going to need as much, instead of revelation of how to get this movement going, we're going to need revelation on what do we do with this movement. What do you do if you're a church of two or three hundred and five hundred radical college kids show up on Sunday morning and say, we found Jesus, help us. And they're gonna, they're, they won't know to stop doing some things immediately. It's like, you know, in the charismatic movement and the Jesus people movement, some of you old people like me will remember a love song. There you go. All right. So, you know, the contemporary music, Christian music, we call it contemporary Christian music because all these kids from the rock world and the music world start getting saved and they start bringing it to, to, to church. And, and the church people didn't know what to do with it because all we had were pianos and some had organs and drums and guitars were the devil. We didn't, we didn't want that, so... <clears throat> But they got saved. You know, this happened in, in California when about four or five hundred of them showed up and I guess Chuck Smith, was that who it was? Church? You know, and our story's told, I guess it's true. I was told to me a very credible story that, you know, these 400, these 400 uh, kids barefooted in their tie-dye t-shirts and smelling like stale pot and, you know, they show up and their feet are dirty and and the elders came up to, to him one Sunday morning and said, yeah, these kids are going to soil the, the new carpet. You've got to do something. And what I was told, he said, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. And when they, they came back next Sunday, he'd ripped up all the new carpet. <laughs> no more problem. But when he baptized, there were 400 of them baptized in the, in the ocean one Sunday night, I think it was. And these kids, these guys in love song, they, 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 they knew... This is, this is important, this, this, this baptism thing. We've just made a public statement of, you know, they, they got it enough to know this, this, was, this is a big deal. So they got to talking and they said, well, we need to do something to celebrate. So the, the, the most exciting thing to them was just get high. So they went back to the apartment, rolled a joint and got high. And when he told the story, he said, three or four weeks later, I don't know, he may have said two, he may have said three or four, this Holy Spirit, just one day they just got convicted. You know what? This doesn't feel right, this smoking, this, this, this marijuana. I don't, we're, I, don't feel like, I don't feel like we're supposed to, I don't feel like the Lord's pleased with that and so they quit smoking. So the Lord just starts cleaning up these people. But if the legal crowd had gotten to them first, who knows if they would have even survived. But I just said that to say, This is going to stretch us. I told the Lord once, Lord, I want you to send revival. And he said, okay, what are you going to do if I come in riding on a donkey? I knew exactly what he meant. 
What if this doesn't look like what you imagine in your mind? If the, what if the king doesn't come in in a chariot and, you know, with all the regal splendor and this and that? What, what, what if he's riding on a little donkey? Are you going to be okay if I come in on a donkey? And I knew what he was saying to me, son. You need, you, are you going to let me do this my way or are you going to be in charge? 